man named Christian Bruckner is the prime suspect in the notorious Madeleine McCann case. He was announced as a suspect publicly in 2022, but cops had their eye on him for several years. Little Madeline was said to be abducted from the family's vacation apartment in Portugal. There's been controversy about Christian because many people believe that he is just a fall guy in the case and that Madeline's parents are actually the ones that should be looked at as suspects. My comments below my previous video were riddled with these types of comments mixed with comments about Christian. And it's understandable, the more you dive in, the more you question everything. But in 2017, a friend of Christian's and partner in crime in the past turned into an informant and came forward with Christian's name and information and then went into witness protection. And recently, even more information came out about Christian and that a man with his description was actually seen at the vacation property in the days leading up to Madeline's disappearance several times and Christian also knew how to get into a locked room with ease and that a suspicious comment on a drunken night to his friend years later may even give more information and insight as to just what happened that night his potential involvement and how he could have allegedly abducted Madeline from her bedroom without so much as a peep and it wasn't through the window I'm Linda with it's a crime so now let's get into it Christian Bruckner has a very shady past to say the least. He's currently in jail on unrelated charges for sexually assaulting an elderly woman and his complete background, let's just say, is anything but pure and involves all ages of children, including photos and videos that are beyond inappropriate. He's been known to steal for a living and do other odd jobs and was said to even work at the property where little Madeline vanished called the Ocean Club. In fact, he was very familiar with not only the property, but the surrounding area, and for years. In a German TV documentary, it was said that Christian regularly carried out repair work as a maintenance man at the Ocean Club, and he made a living from various other odd jobs, from fixing and selling cars to bartending or serving, but he made most of his money from theft, and he liked to hit up the vacationers and resorts, stealing cameras and valuables, and as far back as 1995 is when a young 18 year old backpacking Christian arrived in Portugal and started working in the resorts of Praia de Luz. Now there's also new information that's been recently revealed that a man of his description was seen at the apartment complex where little three-year-old Madeline disappeared from. She disappeared one night on May 3rd of 2007 from the family's apartment as her parents were dining with other friends at a nearby restaurant on the property. It was said each person took turns going into the apartment and checking on their children. For the McCanns, it was Madeline and her younger twin siblings. When they went to go check at approximately 10 p.m., that's where they found Madeline was gone. So now they're saying that this Christian Bruckner guy is the one and only person who is their prime suspect. Another key detail recently revealed was from this informant who said that Christian Bruckner actually had experience lockpicking and would brag about the tools he used to break in and rob these vacation homes. It was a 14 lockpick kit and was said that he could open any type of doors, including security doors. The long believed theory that night was that they both escaped out of the window. But now, with this new information coming forward about the lock picking, the authorities believe that Madeline may have left out the door with Christian, which opens up new possibilities into this 16-year-old case. It's reported that night that the metal window shutters were rolled up all the way and a curtain was blowing, but earlier in the night the window was closed. The authorities call the window theory a red herring. So when the informant was asked how Christian got into the McCann's apartment, he said through the door easily, he can open any door. You can use it, meaning the kit, to pick any lock, including security locks. Now, this is a classic diversion, isn't it? If this is true, the abductor wants authorities to look left while they go right, so it's very plausible. And to a seasoned criminal, it would be something that would be naturally to do. A police source talked about the lockpicks and said, 
The German detectives were electrified by the discovery of the toolkit with the lockpicks in it. This evidence is now very important to them. It confirmed a suspicion that they'd had for a long time that Christian B entered the apartment through the door. Now note, the apartment is on the ground floor, from my understanding, room 5A, and the police believe that it was less likely to be viewed by witnesses or the passing public because they say the front door is located in a recessed area. It was also where the swimming pool was facing, and on the opposite side of the pool is the restaurant, that restaurant where the McCanns dined at. And several years after this said abduction, the informant said while Christian was drunk, he mentioned that little Madeline didn't even scream. He said he was disturbed by this statement. And authorities believe because Christian had also worked as a mechanic in his past that he may have used car paint solvent on Madeline to knock her out and then opened the window to air out the room and then out the door he went, which would connect the she didn't even scream comment. And as I mentioned in my research, I found that Christian actually did odd jobs around those apartments and now there's been sightings from other people saying that the week leading up to the abduction, they saw a man with pockmarked face, you know, scarring from acne and had witnessed this guy several times leading up to that night. On April 28th, 2007, the McCanns arrive in Portugal and stay at the Ocean Club in apartment 5A. Two days later, April 30th, this is the first time a man was seen wearing sunglasses at 8 a.m. and was seen staring directly at the apartment. Two days later again, on May 2nd, which is a day before the abduction, a blonde man was seen acting odd at the resort's reception. It said midday with no particular reason to be there. And later that same day, witnesses see the same man at a place called Habana Cafe, which is actually a five minute walk from the resort. On May 3rd is the abduction day. Two women, who are sisters, noticed two men loitering at the apartment and said to be staring at the McCanns. So the question is, was this Christian Bruckner and an accomplice? The authorities are saying in evidence files that in order for Christian to leave through the window, he'd have to step on the bed and then go out the window. And if he left out that window, it would also leave it a bit more vulnerable of an exit, right? As there is a public street right beside it, making it more risky for some someone to witness the crime. Also, if he'd go out the window with a child, how would he do it with a three-year-old? Did he pass her to someone? How would that work? It was said phone records also placed Christian no more than five minutes away from the resort a couple hours before the kidnapping. And at 7.32 p.m., Christian received a 30-minute phone call, and then it was said an hour later, Madeline vanished between 9.10 p.m. and 10 p.m. It was also said Christian lived around one mile away from the Ocean Club, and his van was also said to be near the area as well that night. And according to the informant, Christian believed he could outsmart the cops, and he even boasted calling himself a master criminal and being really, really good, he said, at his abilities. He would call the authorities useless and said committing crimes in Portugal was easier to get away with than in Germany. And here's an interesting fact. The day after Madeline's disappearance, Christian changed his vehicle into someone else's name and then soon after he left Portugal and moved back to Germany. And years later, in 2014, authorities searched his apartment and found photos and videos and abused a five-year-old and was sentenced to 15 months in prison. In 2016, authorities did multiple searches of an abandoned factory that was once owned by Christian. They found USB drives with, it said something about 8,000 photos or something like that, and videos of more child abuse, and Christian produced some of these himself. This evidence was found under a dead dog that was buried on the property and three girls' swimsuits were also found in an RV owned by him as well. He boasted about his RV and how it would be a perfect place to hide children and drugs. The informant talked about this and said, he told me I can transport children, kids in this space. Drugs and children, you can transport them in this van. It's a safe space in the van. Nobody can find them. Nobody can catch you. Now, in a previous video, I talked about German investigators who have been investigating this case and only recently found new information and also followed up on missed information from years ago that led them to search a reservoir 30 miles 
from the Ocean Club apartment and searched for any clues that would help them in solving this case. It was a place that Christian was known to frequent and called it his little paradise. I did a video, you could see that right here or in the description box below. The authorities searched for three days, digging holes, searching around the water. They even said that they may have discovered pertinent information in the case. And photos and video evidence is said to have led the investigators to the area, but also information and a picture of a shrine of Madeline after her abduction. A couple found the shrine and reported it just months after she vanished, but they never heard back from the authorities. It was when they saw a picture of Christian on the news about Madeline years later that they contacted police and they followed up on the lead. People are very divided in their opinions on this case, even riled up about it because they think Christian is a nothing burger. But we can't ignore the fact that Christian is no angel. And if you look at all of this that's coming out about Christian, so far we now have a man has the same description of Christian spotted in the area around the time that Madeline was abducted. His phone was pinged nearby just hours before. We have a person who knew him and stole with him. He was a criminal with them. And he came forward and said that Christian had a lock picking kit and boasted about his endeavors. Christian had access to solvents, which I mean, many people could have that kind of access, but you know, all these little circumstantial things do add up. You have him know how to get into a locked room easily and the tools to do it. And you have eyewitnesses describing him in the area leading up to little Madeline's disappearance. You also have the fact that he preys on children and there is a lot of files on him of child abuse. And the reservoir that he was known to frequent just so happened to have a shrine there. Why even put a shrine up at that spot if it was or wasn't him? Let me know below. Now, Christian Bruckner also wrote letters from jail and is adamant that he's innocent, that he isn't the one to be looking at in the disappearance of Madeline McCann. He also did a curious drawing of a daisy, which symbolizes innocence. Remember the he loves me, he loves me not where you pluck the flowers? It's like that here, only Christian did it with guilty and not guilty. Now, if you look at this picture, he has it where some of the petals are off already. It's interesting to me, he coincides each petal with one of the phrases. But on the right, he has guilty and then a large space and the word not. And the letters guilty on the right also have a different style of L's than the one on the left, that's just an observation. But in the He Loves Me version, one starts off with that, He Loves Me, and then changes to He Loves Me Not. So if we start with that, guilty then not guilty, when you get to the very end, the last pedal, it's still left with guilty. So I'd love to know what your thoughts are. Is this duper's delight? Is he taunting? Let me know your thoughts below. And why even go to the lengths to do this picture? This does fascinate me. Let me know what you think. You gotta wonder what his motive is, right? Everybody has a why to why they do the things they do no matter how little. And so the question is, what's his? Now the one thing though that strikes me a bit odd, I will say, is in the timeline and it's where Jerry McCann, who is Madeline's dad, he was said to be on the street talking to another person the night Madeline disappeared. And from what I'm seeing was on the street just outside of the window to the apartment. Now I'm new to this case. I've always heard about it and followed bits and pieces, but not to do a full deep dive. And that's gonna take a long time. This is a 16 year old case. So I came across this information, thought, wait a minute, there, this is kind of odd, right? Because she was said to disappear between 9.15 and 10 o'clock. There were two other witnesses on the street, the person who was talking to Jerry and another person who witnessed the two people talking. But there's conflicting reports. Now, if you followed this case and know about this one little tidbit, can you please, uh, you know, stick it down below and let me know what your thoughts are and what's going on on that. I'm searching more into the details. Check out more videos in the case here and stay tuned for another video from It's a Crime. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.